here we go. Let's see if we can make it work again. It might have been a one-time thing. We'll see. Are you ready? Turn the key when I yell. Okay. Okay. Keep doing it. Okay. Keep it held for a minute. It might have been a fluke. Okay. There's a lot of trash accumulating that somebody's got to do something about. Last time I was in Chalmette, there was like a hardware paint store that had thrown everything out. There was a great bunch of stuff. Not as much trash as there was. Doctor's offices are usually good because they have crazy shit, but this is just structural junk walls and things. No crazy doctor equipment. Industrial canal was breached. The water just whoosh. And a lot of the people that live there say that this barge was released so it could crash a hole through the levee and ruin their neighborhood. And there are all the cranes and there's all fucked up and gone now. Just see what happened. We can't argue with that. The house is lined up like waiting to take off on the road. Let's talk about tragic. Not a chicken box left in the city. This kind of well-to-do suburb called Metairie. Up and down the street in front of every house was a pile of garbage bigger than the house. Every house, as far as you can see, this endless suburb, 10,000 houses, 10,000 piles of garbage bigger than a house. It was the drywall, the carpeting, the wood flooring, and all the belongings. Everything. Everything in the world. It just totally devalued the meaning of stuff. There's still a lot and a lot, and it's still tapering down now from then, but it was crazy then. Just anything you wanted was there. Well, when people come back and gut their house, they put everything out in the street. They don't want it anymore. So it's a free-for-all. It's wonderful. You get to keep it out of the landfill. And it's a good thing, I think. You never know how many lawnmowers are in the world until there's a hurricane and they start showing up. Air conditioning grills and car parts. Consumer waste and stereos. All these vacuums, TVs, and lawnmowers. Three eternals. Ooh, that looks good. There's some kind of medical device. I'll park right here. Yes! Caught my eye. Industrial suction solenoids. Yeah, it's nice. grinder to grind dentures, I guess. I don't know if I could use it, but maybe. So that might be good. I'll think about that. I'm having a show coming up tomorrow. I'm hanging it this afternoon. So here's a menagerie. Testomatic. It's a tube tester with a meter. The tubes are salvage. I found on the street a big box of tubes. Uh, found this in the street. Found the beadboard on the street. Some old cord that I found. Very dangerous, you know, frayed cord and exposed wires. I like it. You could have it over the bed and it could like be some kind of symbol, like this is a good time or a bad time to do it. It's kind of fun, it's interactive. This one I call surprise. When the doors open, these lights light. When the door shut, that light lights. Old fuse box with the screw and fuses, which are the same size as light bulbs. So I couldn't resist. It's got a little switch I found, so. They're not dangerous in the typical way, like, oh, I'm going to accidentally pull out a cord, or... But they're dangerous in so much as I could put my finger in here and get shocked to hell. But, uh, you know, eh, it adds a little touch of something, I think. About two years ago in New Orleans, they spent our budget on these new stoplights that are uh, working with LEDs. I don't know why, it must have been a kickback scheme, but every stoplight in the city got replaced with these LED ultra-bright ones that blind you. And now they all broke because of the storm. And so they're just uh, stealing a bunch of stoplights. And I threw away the red and the green and the yellow plastic covers. But I kept the LEDs. And about half of them work. And so I was going to scavenge them and make tons of lights out of them. Because they're very bright. This is telephone cable. You know, all the telephone cable broke. 
Or is it? I have some. It looks like this. Inside there's 200 individual wires. Brought them all down to here to this oxygen container. So it's going to stand up. So now I just have to solder all these wires together and get it all working right. And then find a power supply. That's one thing I have to scavenge. I haven't found the right power supply yet. And uh, make it work. Oh, it's one of those uh, microwave cleaners, you know, that vibrates things clean. They're very expensive, but I don't really need it. I like dental trash. Golf ball? Ah! I've been looking for one of these. It doesn't look like it's going to work, but if it does, I need AC adapters like crazy. Oh, look at nice little... A little depressing though, I think, to have an oxygen bag on your wall. Yeah, this might be a good lamp. I'll set this aside. Ah, oh, now this is useful. <laughs> Hello? It's a little bit. You know, you see something big and amazing and it looks great, but a lot of times the little bits are more useful. I'm more into little bits of metal, I think. I just don't know what to do with these. Sad. I have no idea. I don't like kitsch, you know. I'm trying to stay away from kitsch, but it's so tempting with things like this. You can plug it in and it, let's see. It's kind of dangerous, but it's hard not to make it blow up. There. So this many work on it. They're very bright. He has a hundred of these lights on this thing. That's good. It doesn't use much power. They're great, but they're not so good when they get flooded in uh, toxic water for 20 days. I guess it's a little toxic. I haven't cleaned it. I should have. Well, I was moving away from Portland, Oregon, where I lived before, because it was too cold and rainy. And so I just looked at the map and thought of everywhere hot. And I went everywhere hot. And everywhere was unlivable except for here. The southwest was no good. And the South is just lame. It's the only progressive, warm weathered place there is in this country. So, process of elimination. And it's a special place. Nowhere else is like it. Certainly the best garbage. Couldn't do this anywhere else quite the same. It's an aesthetic here. People appreciate handmade, cobbled together things like nowhere else. They really, they like messy, broken things. Nobody demands manufactured perfection here. They have a real love of uniqueness. Well, this could be something really nice, I think. It's a little high tech, you know, with aluminum all. But it looks like it would be nice above the bed. Damn. Nobody's ever given me a hard time about garbage getting. Everybody goes by and nobody seems to mind. It's very nice. I park in the middle of the road all the time. I obstruct traffic. I get in people's way. Nobody cares. One more pile over there I think we have to check out. This one is uh, called Practical. It's out of an oxygen canister. I found a bunch of these and I got one and the rest were so heavy I tried to get a friend and by the time I went back they'd been picked up. Well this is like an industrial stop switch for a motor or something I found. It's got a little night light mode. I haven't opened it in a while. There we go. I left this one very rustic inside. This a lot of uh, rust and Katrina debris. Definitely get zapped if you touch anything. <laughs> there we go. This one is a bowling ball I found. Where did I find that? In the street recently. I also found this little key switch. I like the idea of it being like a very secure nightlight. I think a kid would like that. It's like, when I was a kid, I always wanted things with locks on it. Yeah, it's Jim. I don't know. I think it's Eye of the Beholder. I like this guy. Somebody can look at the lamp and say, that's pretty, but all they're saying is that piece of garbage is really pretty. That industrial designer who made this tank, it's like, they had some aesthetics. Why'd they do that curve? It's like there's no other reason. I mean, all right, maybe it's practical, but... It's pretty. They didn't get an assignment. Oh, design a beautiful tank. It's design a cheap functional tank, but that kind of prettiness, it's so sincere. Ooh, it's 
going on? Beautiful colored grid. Spinning reel. What do you do with a spinning reel? People's garbage isn't as good as business's garbage. It's a lot sadder. Smell like a fire to you? I found this is a on St. Claude. It's a old cast iron gas ring for a boiler. The whole boiler is beautiful cast iron parts. I just love this. And I happened to find this a couple of years ago. It's a steam radiator cap, and it's just match made in heaven. I guess I'm gonna put lights coming out radiating radial pattern. Nine lights for however many holes. And uh, my sex series I've been working on. This is the first one. That's my big uh, trepidation about moving back to the South. I was born in Florida and I had my teenage years here. And I'm not compatible with Southern women, I don't think. Uh, so Pacific Northwest, everybody loves me. It's, this is, I'm popular there. I like those tough, dikey women there. And they understand me and I understand them and it's very good dynamic. But uh, come down here and every it's, it's everybody's all womanly, you know? It's, it's, people really go for that kind of stuff, the whole gender roles, traditional gender roles, which I can't quite get up to speed on. Part of me just doesn't understand it, and part of me resentful of it, and I won't do it anyway, but that's just terrible, stabbing myself in the foot, because it's, uh, it's, it's terrible dating for me down here. I keep thinking all these great survivalist women are going to move down here after the hurricane, but I haven't seen them yet. Totally makes me want to leave immediately. Makes me want to go to New York. I always picture all the women in New York smart and beautiful and wonderful and tough. And I really believe that. That's kind of scary. It's like I totally believe it. Ah, if I was in New York, I, my romantic life would be perfect. What is that stuff? That looks like another dentist, doesn't it? You find something like this, and it's like, okay, it's already a lamp. Do I just clean it up and sell it? Do I salvage it? What do I, what, you know? It's like, how do I improve upon something like this? Nice chair, full upholstery work. It's a little air compressor to power the air tools. What do I really need, you know? What do I want to go with my art, my life? That's what you got to think every time. It's a constant decision. That looks like an x-ray tube. It's a constraint I really like, working with garbage. I'd feel ridiculous doing this, going to the store and buying all the parts. It's the best junk I'll ever be. And it just has to be used. It has to be seen. People have to think about it. People have to see how pretty junk is. It's just all came together. It's kind of perfect. The perfect storm aftermath. It's all New Orleans has is this great junk. No idea. There's nowhere else to go. This is like the bottom of the food chain. Once you're in New Orleans, you have to go overseas. There's nowhere. It spoils you. There's nowhere else to go in this country like this. Where are they down here? Rampart. Rampart. In the old New Orleans neighborhoods near me, the junk was amazing because everybody was really poor, and so there were tons and tons of tube radio sets, old cast iron furnaces, things they haven't made, you know, since the 10s or the 20s, 1920s, 100-year-old things people are living with and using. Just beautiful. I have some beautiful metal pieces they'll never be again. Probably no other city would have in their garbage, but these people don't have any money. They've been holding on to it. Finally got flooded. That's amazing stuff. Yeah, most of the junk I found has been in my neighborhood. This pile has been good. It's not great right now. I live in a pretty good junk neighborhood, I have to admit. It's called uh, Faubourg Marigny, which means Marigny neighborhood. It's outside of the French Quarter. And at the railroad tracks is the end of the Marigny and the beginning of the Bywater. Our neighborhoods didn't flood. They're right by the river, and there was no levee breaks in our neighborhoods. So the flooding ended right about here where we are. This is a Burgundy. So I'm sure the water was up to about right about the street. Good neighborhoods. I like them. Heaters, you know, the gas goes in here and these things get nice and hot. These uh, gas jets have little flames here and the flames heat up these little nubbies until they're red hot and that serves to burn the exhaust better of the gas 
and make it cleaner so it doesn't give you such bad headaches. Because these aren't vented, there's no chimney. These are outlawed in most states, but they're legal here in New Orleans. These are pretty, but they're not beautiful. These are beautiful, but they're broken. No more in there. There's millions of them, and there's a lot of these laying around, but they're incredibly delicate. So not many made it whole, but these did. So I used a little beadboard base and made little lights out of them. They remind me a lot of New Orleans because I've never seen those heaters anywhere else. Oh, look at that. See how delicate they are? They just, look at that, they just break. It's so delicate. All right. More trash over here. I was going crazy. I was gone for two months. I was going crazy. I was before most other people, and there's no electricity, and no gas, and no water, and no phone, and no anything. And it was dark. The gangs were all gone, and uh, nobody knew anything. There was a big chemical spill near here, but nobody knew exactly what. And so there's all these barbed wire, concertina wire over all the streets saying warning chemical spills and so you couldn't drive anywhere without that. And I couldn't leave my neighborhood because I wasn't allowed in and they wouldn't let me back in. I snuck in the first time. So I was trapped here. I had a bunch of water and a bunch of food. So I wasn't going to die but it was probably about two weeks I think before I left the little neighborhood. And it was, it was odd. House didn't get looted. They said people tried but the National Guard came and it was awesome. So I was the luckiest person in town. Not even my car got flooded. But I have that survivor's guilt, you know? The lucky people feel miserable because of that. A bowling ball? Let me stop and get that bowling ball. It's a little kitschy, but... Bowling ball's a bowling ball. Excuse me. Ruin the bowling ball. I didn't think that was possible. How do you ruin a bowling ball? It's just gross. Plastic's all gross and it's got this weird layer of gook on it. And toxic bowling ball. I got seriously into it around uh, the beginning of this year. I decided I have to figure out a career. And I had made a bunch of lamps out of junk about two years ago, three years ago. They were just sitting around my shop. And I finally was like, I'm going to just take them to the cafe and Took them to the cafe and they all sold. And I was like, wow. Just made me think of it differently. It's like people want this. I like doing it. It started me doing it. So I decided I'll commit to a year of it and see how I like it. I like it so far. I wanted to be a cult leader. That was my big career ambition. It seems a logical thing to be. I don't think I imagine doing this. No, I still don't imagine doing this. I always like making stuff. I've always made stuff just like this. That hasn't changed. Maybe if I could combine it with a cult. Best of all worlds. Oh, that tree is sad. Everything's sad. These people are working class and are nice. But, you know, maybe all the cool hipsters and stuff will come and get super cheap housing and build it back up and you know how the gay people follow them and then the young professionals and it'll build up New Orleans better than ever. That's what I'm hoping. This might be it. Why don't we light it up and see if it still works. Ta-da! Look at that. Ha 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 ha. This is all the logistics that's going to require glue and epoxy and... Ooh, that looked really good. This is a lower ninth. I haven't seen it in a while, but it's good to go through just to remind yourself. So I go here, but not for trash picking, just kind of like to get perspective on things. It's just their stuff, you know, it's on the street. It's not like they put it there in the street. It's washed onto the street. But it's a huge area. I mean, 
it's just not like a few blocks like this it just goes on and on. But I can't get any garbage from up here because it's just, it's, it's just too sad. Oh God, that's tempting. Those are those nice little ceramic things. So tempting. Doesn't exactly look how I thought it was gonna look, but what are you gonna do? Just always rebel against messy. My parents were kind of wild, artisty people, and so it was always really neat. And I was into the stock market and golf and violin and plaster my hair down, try to make it look neat. But I've never been a neat person, and now I'm finally just embracing the messy. You know, everything you buy, especially manufactured goods, are neat and perfect. So it's nice to be able to go buy something messy and random. in the past you know they lived in nature and so they made things out of wood and pigments and junk like that but now my nature has always been the city and so this is my natural materials and they're just there for the taking just like you know wood and stone used to be for people because I am an urban guy this is what's out there there's always been a lot of trash in the city but now there's just a lot of junk Shut the door. golden age of junk